Hello everyone, Master Zion 101 here, and in this video we're going to just be modeling a hose. So, taking our default cube here first, um, should probably turn on my, my keys. So we'll just rev in and out while we wait for this thing to start up. From, from. Alright, now let's do this. So, I'm going to take this cube, scale it in on the X, look at it in front view. You know, ever since I've been in 2.8, I just can't tell what's front anymore. You know, I used to always know what was my front axis, but I always find myself working on the wrong side. So we'll just keep scaling this and applying the scale. And we'll just bring this cube in, shift to keep it live. We'll select this face. And with a face select, if you add a bevel, it will now reverse to normal and bevel it, which will allow you to get this uh, nice kind of trim bevel. Also at this point, I'm gonna Alt X and put a mirror on it. Of course at this point, sword is on. So we're set there. However, I do wanna enable active only. I just like active only. It's a friend to me in time of need. So let's just do a few more cuts here. Just a little tool test. Um, I had done a couple of different demos trying to figure out which one I wanted to show you guys first after this release. Uh, one of the main reasons we did it early was so I could just get back to tutorial content because it sucks um, having to wait in order to do this stuff, you know, and then better stuff comes along. So I'm going to look at it in front view, but I'm going to press 8 a couple of times to uh, kind of rotate the view. And I see the auto perspectives on. So... Where is that at? Navigation, auto perspective, this thing's the devil. Also under system, um, or save and load, save prompts also the devil. But now that we got that turned off, we can really work on this thing as needed. Just a couple of cuts here, holding control. Cycle back to box, do a little follow-up. Just adding a few little details in here that will um, look real nice after we um, deform it. So we'll cut some lines in. Then we'll cut a trim around that. Press B for bevel. T to add some uh, thickness to it via solidification. We'll just draw one more. And I think we are ready to proceed so I'm going to just press control A or actually let's duplicate it we'll move this to another layer called junk press 1 to make sure we're on layer 1 and we'll go ahead and um, visual geometry to mesh which just applies everything and we can actually go in here and do a little bit of cleanup uh, normally I don't like having um, edges going less than straight so we'll just get in here select a couple of these and clean up I probably could have actually done a little bit of preparatory work to make this work out but you live and you learn right so continuing on mistakes aside and of course we'll just mirror this to the other side I could run clean mesh but I want to make sure everything's working right. Also, classic blue box is back. However, if you draw it on the surface, it's going to continue using new 3D box. Um, but up at the top bar, we do have a line to view which will force classic blue box, which will just be a knife project cut. It's just super reliable. John sent us a message about it saying that, you know, he just hated life without it. We had it added back that day. So. I'm happy to say that 713 is JAMA approved. So we'll press Alt X, but this time we'll use symmetry, and now it's symmetrized. So, in a way, even though it's all ingons, good ingons, before what we had was terrible ingons. You know, even in the ingon game, we got standards. So I'm going to right click, subdivide, press X, and we're just going to dissolve only faces on this grid. Uh, in order to use this with knife project, you have to not have faces so if you try this trick uh, and it doesn't work more likely that's what it is so i'm going to press d jump over to custom press c 
which will make the custom shape the grid. We'll go in edit mode here and we see that knife is already in box, but we need it in custom and we need to fill in the collection in order to make sure it works. Uh, our transition of going from object mode to edit mode for this custom cutter business is still requires a little bit of planning, but it's something that we are pondering heavily. So now we've kind of forced some quad geometry in here. Better job than if we used a remesh. However, in the middle section, we definitely don't want to have double loops. So I'm going to use bisect mirror. So just look at what we have here and it looks good. So visual geometry to mesh that will work. So the next thing from here, we're going to use a hops classic under mesh tools. We'll just use twist 360 and we'll just lower the count. Blender will crash. Holy moly. All right, recovered my auto save and I'm back and we're right back where we were. So now let's use the power of save. We'll just call this 713-ho3 uh, demo underscore one. You know, I'm never gonna look through this again. And we'll just go back where we were and see if we can uh, cause that crash again. You know, we live life on the edge. One, two, three. All right, that's actually enough right there. We'll just click to apply that. Get rid of the uh, little F3 down there. Might be our enemy now. At this point, I do want to put a bevel on it. And that'll put a nice little crack in between all the transitions. And then as far as the origin, we could apply it and just get the origin that way. So let's actually do that just uh, for kicks. Blender gets a little bit slow sometimes, but you know, let's um, visual geometry to mesh, control A, or, um, how do you, ca okay, origin to geometry. That isn't my snap pie menu. Here we go, snapping pies. Uh, Shift S, origin to geometry. And what we'll do is scale this up. I know this is probably kind of confusing. I'm just uh, figuring it out as we go here as well. So I'm going to select this, use uh, control P to parent this. Then we'll just uh, move this to the center and delete it, which we have to select this and unparent it now. Now we can delete it. And now we have the right origin for three. Just in my past experiences, I realized I should probably have dealt with that better than I did in the demonstrations um, I did on Twitter. So at least now at this point, we can put a cylinder in the middle and we'll just put a, um, first we'll hit it with S sharp. However, we do want to make sure crease and seam is on in the control tilde. So that way, whenever we add a level of sub D, it's nice and rounded and doesn't lose its integrity. And then we'll put a bevel on it didn't even have to hold control since one wasn't even present and this will be the uh, tip of our hose so actually instead of moving it over let's just um how much junk do we have here not a lot actually we lost one of our pieces let's move this back to the first collection let's see what's going on with our collections here Okay, somehow junk became our primary collection. Let's see, new. Sorry about that. Somehow I lost my collection there for a moment. Things were kind of weird, but we're back up in the club. So we got our collection of stuff and things here. I guess, um, you know, we'll deal with that later. Control space bar back to full screen. So I'm going to shift A and we're going to insert a path. R. Not. All right. So select everything, hide it and shift A. We'll bring in a path. Where's this? Might be running into something strange here. Okay, so we have to have our collection selected. Sheesh Blender, which is giving me the work today. All right, so R, nine, zero, shift R, shift R, G, Z, 
two. And now we'll just have our curve face in the right direction and sitting on top of its origin just to make our lives easier. Now we'll insert a cylinder and put quite a few loops in it, but we're gonna delete the tops and bottoms. And let's just use array, press Z to make it stack to one. Scale that down, select this, select the curve, control P, curve to form. However, we do wanna go inside of the uh, helper, make sure it's on the right axis. Well, more than likely we'll be making a uh, modal for that in the future. However, we gotta think about how um, we wanna make it intuitive. So let's Alt H bring this piece back. And what I wanna do for this is duplicate it. We'll hide one. And on this one, we're gonna apply array, apply simple to form and then control A, apply the location. And on this one, we want to apply to sub D, apply to bevel, and then join both of these together. So now this one's receiving an extra degree of bevel. So we'll just move that over. And on this object, we will just choose our end cap to be cube. And we're done, except not yet. So. More than likely, we'll need to do some modifications to this in edit mode. So we'll just select everything, scale it down. Yeah, I don't know if that actually existed when I did my first hose. And also on this, we want to make sure auto smooth is on or else the shading won't look correct. All right, and we'll just hit it with a smooth anyways. And we're just about done here, except that the end cap just isn't facing the right direction. I just can't live with that. Let's see, Alt R, that one's correct. So we'll just duplicate it. Control M, Control M. I guess Control M isn't a thing anymore. SC minus one. Shift N to flip the normals. And this one is now called cube zero three. So we'll fill that in. Not what I was going for. There we go. So we are just about done with our hose here. We'll just hide this so we no longer have to see it. And if we select our curve inside, of course, we're able to deform this hose nicely which will come in handy for future content. So from here, what I want to do is duplicate it, right click cancel, control tilde, and we'll um, remove the start and end cap from this duplicate. We'll go in edit mode and press Alt S to push it out on everything but the Z. So now we have a hose inside of a hose and we'll press F3 because my settings got reset in order to bring up the search menu, we're going to type in poke. And I keep pressing spacebar. We'll press Alt J, which starts my play. You know, let's just fix that. You know, Blender's just um, seems a bit reset today. Must have done something. All right, now stop messing with me. So with this piece that we we used poke on, you know, just to uh, give a recap on that, we used poke and then used alt J in order to requad it, but in a different direction. We're going to put a wireframe modifier on it. And this is our result so far. So there are a couple of things with this that bothered me. So one of them is having a line every so forth on this so the way i worked around that was actually selecting these and deleting the edges so we'll select the bottom ones as well and now it connects a little better another thing is that if you have merge on it doesn't look as good as it does without however on the main one we definitely do want to have merge on so if we select this curve in the middle which at this point should probably be x-rayed it's famous enough 
see what happened to x-ray okay in front just it's been renamed probably been renamed for a minute and we have our deformable hose that will look good so the next thing from here is of course making this thing look good for a render so you know me i'm a simple simple lighting guy i'm gonna put an area light in the front rotate it make it bigger 100 watts we'll press q and make sure contact shadows on and let's look at this from the front and just see what we get and look at so far hopefully not a crash one crash is all it can take we'll press alt h bring everything back we're going to move this to the junk layer we don't need that anymore and also what we're going to need to do is modify this one and then put it back so just delete that sorry we lose our end cap also playing with the scale has messed this object up a bit so let's uh divide that by two and now things are looking good again sometimes just dividing it in half uh, is the solution for all your problems so with the first piece here in fact at this point let's work in render really just live on the edge we'll assign a material and my favorite shader of course is the principal shader in blender <clears throat> it's just so easy to use and it shades it shades everything it's rubber it's metal it just looks great all right a little bit of chop here i also have ev rendering in the background so that was supposed to be the fun fact about this video is that i have ev literally choking on a render that it's just jumping through frames on but it, it's kind of a heavy render actually we want to give this a new material but we don't want to go blue with it what was i thinking all right let's look at what we got so far we'll select this area give it the same material and we'll continue on making uh, more shinier and shinier materials till finally we have to uh, go back and start dialing it down but I like to use basic materials on these quick little crunches just to get a get a look you know I'm not committed to getting this thing all the way to surf uh, rendering um, however look how much better it looks with the hearted normals on it I mean of course we're forcing this geometry that was originally flat to deform so you can see a few little surface imperfections when we look up close to it. However, we could actually clean this up and get rid of some of our support lines from earlier. And that would also improve things. But yeah, I'm not trying to get that uh, in depth with this thing today. So we'll select these pieces here. And we'll just assign a material, uh, probably too shiny. Yeah, that's better. And in fact, this one, we just got to uh, darken that a little bit. There we go. And so if we duplicate this, maybe jump back to regular mode for a second. We'll just um, S, Z, minus one, and then shift in to flip to uh, recalculate the normals. And we could actually give this a name uh, don't even have name stack going on right now, so we have to just go here call this in cap one, you know So we're back in business guys Voila, so we look at this thing, you know, we could actually move these over to um, Junk now. I mean, they're not junk. I'm not gonna just delete my chunk willy-nilly but just stuff I no longer need in my scene. Let's see. It should update and show the proper ones. However, I think what I have to do is give it every material. And then you'll see it come through. So there's still things that I'm learning every day. But now you see I got the curves that I'm looking for. Some I didn't even observe the first time. Um, so I apologize for such a terrible video, probably kind of rambling a little bit, but 
you know, the process really is fairly straightforward. I mean, the highlight of this was using a knife project in order to cut the um, grid into it so that we could deform it. I'm sure there's a myriad of other ways that it could be done. However, you know, I'm always looking for the quickest way in a way that uh, involves the, le the least amount of pain. So we're gonna hide this. And, you know, I gotta press W to exit box cutter. Press D to bring up my decal machine. Let me enable decal machine, one moment. You know what, I'll just do it on video. We'll do it live, jeez. I don't even have decal machine enabled. Sometimes you gotta wait a second for all the power to become active. What happened to my, there we go, now it's enabled. And I actually keep all my decals on the Dropbox now. So I'm hoping that this actually works out for me. So we'll select that. I'm trying to keep it consistent across all systems because losing decals is just painful. So that's it. Everything's here. We press D and you can see my decal panels just going nuts. Uh, it's because I've been using the SCH pack, which I'm a big fan of. I was able to meet Sir Charles in person. He's a great guy. And I was able to talk him into creating some decals that were um, particularly catered towards, uh, I think, a 3D audience of things that people would want to uh, stick on their assets, particularly myself. So I feel that it's a decal set made just for me. And I'm looking for one in particular that I love slapping on this hose. But, you know, anything that's a myriad of numbers and letters, I'm there. You know, I'll slap that on a robot's face in a heartbeat. However, it does have to look good. So, an appropriate sticker will be Ingon because, warning guys, Ingons, you know. I was thinking of making like an ad on flick on videos that would show um, just warning people that Ingons are going to be present. However, you know, any keen watcher sees that I kind of bounce back and forth between having control and also uh, just being messy. So really it's a matter of being fast to me compared to um, having optimal geometry because of course the connoisseurs will tip their hat at you, but if your design is hurtful, then um, you know, at the end of the day, what, what did you do? So I'm looking for a particular one here. You know, eventually I'm sure I'll be able to set favorites here and of course have that persist across it, but I did just install things, so. You know, one that I like is also this one. I mean, all these decals just speak to me. So I'll have them linked in the description if you're interested in checking them out. He also did a free pack that's really cool. Uh, we'll just pull this out forward and we'll select both of these, press D, project, and metallic. Uh, Machine recently did some fixes to make these uh, easier to slap on things. Also for the hose. We gotta give it a better material. So for this, I'm gonna actually bring in um, one of Chip's materials from the uh, KitOps material collect. Jeez, not even KitOps is enabled. So continuing to do it live, let's enable KitOps. And we'll just connect it up to my K-Pack. Geez, really just dragging me through the mud. But just to kind of show you guys what it's like for me when I'm having to set up all the all the various add-ons. So, you know, it might seem, hey, this is uh, hell on earth, but I managed to um, keep up with this stuff pretty well. All right, plugged directly into, into Chip's uh, current materials. So the one that I'm looking for is the carbon fiber. And so I'll just hold control when I click it to bring this in. And then we'll just delete that cube and actually put it here. In the future, we of course plan to uh, streamline this process to make it easier. But for me, I always opt for which option has the least amount of clicks. So right now, looks terrible. We jump over to shading. Chip has all these special groups set up. And this one is my favorite because it's the one-stop shop for being done. You know, there we go. Eight. Wow. 
back to um, layout. We're cooking with gas. We're gonna press Alt H, bring back our grid here. And let's just see what this looks like under a variety of different materials. All right, that one's looking good. Let's turn off all the UI elements. This is, this is a wrap, you know. I, I just, what else is there to say about this hose? This hose is done, except it's not done. If I deform it, it's not gonna work out. So let's make sure everything works out, you know, give this tutorial a happy ending. So um, not, not, <laughs> not in the way that that indicated. So we'll press control P, we'll use curve deform. Both of our decals are gonna move. Y, O, Z, Z, and Surprisingly enough, this is all it takes to keep my decals sticking with the object, except right there where they immediately rotated. Hmm. Let's see. Control S, cursor is selected. Control A, rotation. Control A, rotation, location, location. Just to uh, simplify it, I'll control S in case I'm going crazy here. We don't want it to slip around the hose all crazy. All right, I'll never be able to explain that one. We'll move this up the stack a bit. And we'll move this one up the stack a little bit. Control S, select it again. I guess it's just born to be on the side, you guys. Oh wow, I can make the whole thing just kind of wave around, which looks pretty crazy. And also, this whole tutorial powered by the AMD Threadripper. When this thing's working, it's working. But, geez, that's all I can say about this computer. You know, people always ask me about it. I just can't talk about it. I mean, I, don't, I could talk about it, but geez, you guys. So we're looking at our hose with our rapidly transitioning labels. You know, that one's a ponder. Yeah, I may come back with an answer for that one, like do another hose or something. But for now, I feel that the demonstration achieved the result that I was intending to go for with this. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.